<clears throat> all right, hello out there. Good to see you all again. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit about quantum multiple worlds theory. Are you ready? Here we go. Okay, so this is a starting point for um, what should we say, a quantum particle or a human life? It doesn't really matter because I realized there's kind of, um, there's some remarkable similarities. So if you first think about it as a, a quantum particle that say goes through a double slit um, or is shot at a double slit, it acts like a wave and it, it spreads out um, the possibilities of where it ends up spreads out until when it hits the wall or measurement device, it, uh, it seems to pick one spot in the possibility spectrum and it uh, is measured there. Okay, so here's a look at um, a spectrum of uh, human narratives, human identities. Here you have a human on the left, and what you have here are different narrative sort of uh, lines um, down here. So let's suppose there's, um, I suppose this person has eight friends, and each one has a identity, believes this person is a certain type of person, and they have certain judgment about them. That judgment, that story they have about this person is a narrative. One person might think this person's a hero. Another person might think this person is a loser, or there could be anything on the spectrum in between. All these people exist, so all of these narratives exist. They are all real because they all exist in a mind. Just like, um, this is sort of analogous to uh, a superposition. It's a superposition of identities, of, um, of true histories, stories of this person's reality. Now, if this person goes to a party where all eight of these people are there, they will all get information and data that they will use to influence their narrative. And this person will come out still with, um, so in a way the party will appear like a measurement event for all the people there on what narrative is true for this person. And, but interestingly, they will all usually just confirm their narrative of the person in a way they find data to reinforce what narrative, or maybe some choose their, change their minds and they drift a little bit to a different side of the spectrum. But the party's a measurement event, and yet you'd come out of it with all the narratives So another thing I find interesting about this is that not only do these narratives exist in the minds of other people about you, but often in our own minds, we have these narratives. We have a narrative in our mind that is very positive about ourselves, and we have narratives in our minds that are very negative or just very different. We have different perspectives on ourselves. So on a, on a good day, we might see ourselves more as the hero, on a bad day, more as a loser. And even through the course of a day, when we're making choices, we may make choices that fit more in the hero line or fit more in the loser line. And so we're sort of, we're living in all these different narratives at one time. And then these measurement event, events are whenever we encounter another person and they, um, along with us, sort of pick out which one of these narratives fit our identity most in that measurement event, but then we move on and we again resume being the spectrum of possibilities. And, you know, other people also might have, might have a view of us that varies over time and they might even be unsure. And in, in fact, our identity might be in a superposition in our minds and their minds most of the time. And really we only, when someone asks, what is this person like? They pick out some measurement events, some, data and they 
just say this data and they fit it to one of these narratives and they say that's the person, but that's really just a little tiny slice of time and reality. It really reminds me of the measurement, uh, the electron detector or the photon detector in a double slit experiment, how it, it appears that the photon or the electron is considering all these different paths, then at the measurement event, it appears in one spot. But maybe it's very similar to identity. It's just, it's just a momentary uh, connection between the measurement device and the, the identity of the photon or the electron. And then it goes right back into being a superposition of waves. So now uh, consider this picture. This would be uh, starting at a point in time down here in the lower left corner, a decision a person has to make. Um, now, if the decision is insignificant, then I think it would be like that previous picture where you make the decision and you have different realities coming out of that. But if it wasn't terribly significant, then all these realities of decisions, they'd come back down to a measurement event or a party or a meeting some person. But if, they're, if, it's a, if the decision is really big, a big life decision, like do you move to another state or take a job or something, then you'd be going down a single one of these possible timelines into the future. And that timeline would take you to another decision point someday. And again, it would branch off and so on and so on. Now, if you're familiar with the multiple worlds theory of quantum mechanics, the theory is that every time a significant a branching happens, um, and that would be from any moment in time that is a, a superposition of possibilities, that all the branches might happen. All the possible branches may actually happen. Uh, that's what Schrodinger's equation shows with quantum events is that um, when two waves of quantum events hit each other, then it just, it, the waves collide and it makes branching waves. And so that gives you the impression that there, there's, you don't have to have any collapse of the wave function. If you look at it that way, the waves just branch off and continue um, to branch off into wave after wave. And so it could end up looking something like this, where you have it branches and then branches again, branches again, and um, and it just becomes very complex, very fast. Now this is the theory of multiple worlds. It's basically a way of visualizing the theory of multiple worlds, but what I have here, the highlight in green, is intended to represent the path that you have actually taken in life. That is the you that we are talking to and the me that we are listening to. Um, but let's just talk about you. You have actually made certain choices. You've made certain choices to live certain places, take certain jobs, be married to certain people, to do this or that, and has taken you down a single thread through this vast, complicated possibility map of possible branches in life and reality for yourself. So this is a picture of what physics is telling us the way things look like at the quantum level. It looks like this infinitely branching uh, wave function of, of possible realities. So one thing about this that is kind of um, 
is kind of like uh, is problematic to me is the amount of resources that the universe would be expending in order to have this many versions of reality going. It seems incredibly complicated. And if we're living, if this was uh, somehow um, being done inside a computer simulation, it'd be, it would just take incredible amounts of resources. But I did have a revelation the other day that the universe could work exactly like this and yet it not, doesn't have to be incredibly resource intent, intensive because none of these wave functions, none of these threads have to continue. Any one of them, they could end very, very soon after they exist, just like a wave. Um, if these were strings, the universe or the simulations under no obligation for these strings to continue um, far. The only string that we know, the only thread of life and reality that we know has continued into the future is the one we are currently on. All of the other threads could end. They could end immediately after we uh, firmly choose one thread. You know what I'm saying? Basically, I'm saying you don't need hundreds and hundreds of threads. Yeah, you, I call this the, the sudden tragic death solution for the multiple uh, world, multiple lives theory. Um, instead of all these different threads of possible realities that you go down continuing, the universe or the simulation or whatever we're in, it could just be that the thread that our consciousness chooses, that's the thread that continues, and all the other threads, they may exist maybe for a brief amount of time. They don't even have to, they don't have to exist very long. Maybe just long enough so the universe can be sure that we're not on that thread, that that's not the thread that we are going down. Um, but once it's sure we're not on that thread and you're now, you know, into a new era, it could just cut the threads with a sudden tragic death. And in those realities, we just die. And, you know, of course, that'd be heartbreaking for all the people that know us in those realities, but that's not the reality we're in. And the reality we are in, the people, we and in those realities, alive. and so we just die. Of, you know, instead of this, that the universe would have to simulate or you know that the universe would be simulating the universe could just simulate this and really if it cuts these threads soon enough it could just be simulating this and it's still multiple worlds it's just simulating our reality and just simulating the branching threads as far as it needs to to give our consciousness the uh you know, it's giving our consciousness the ability to choose which thread to go down. The superposition of possibilities, being in a superposition of choices, that seems to me to be the nature of consciousness. To be alive is to believe and to sense infinite choices in every moment. And occasionally these choices are the nature of consciousness. To be alive is to believe and to sense infinite choices in every moment and occasionally these choices are the nature of consciousness to be alive is to believe and to sense infinite choices in every moment and occasionally these choices are the nature of consciousness to be alive is to believe and to sense infinite choices in every moment and occasionally these choices are the nature of consciousness to be alive is to believe and to sense infinite choices in every moment and occasionally these choices are
doing a great job out here, man. This stuff has been going on. It goes on day by day. The only time we see it is when somebody catch it on film. What about the thousands of times that they don't catch it on film? What about the thousands of times that they don't catch it on film? 